Evening, everyone. Welcome along to a Friday night at the Darts here at the Modus Super Series, where by the end of the evening's play, we'll know the full six player lineup for tomorrow evening's finals here at the Live Lounge in Portal. Group B is at its halfway point, and this is what happened last night. John Brown got off to a golden start, beating Neil Duff. However, three further defeats sees him rooted to the bottom of the table. Richie Housen struggled in the first half of the night, but one win in the middle keeps him in the mix if he can reverse his fortunes this evening. Chris Quantock looked rock solid on the opening night. If he can attain another four points, he has every chance of making it through. It was a mixed bag in terms of results for Neil Duff. Two wins, two defeats. When he's on, he's on. But the Duffman will be the first to admit he's still got one more level to unlock. But Jared Cole held the keys to the church. The king of the castle won all four matches and is a win away from qualification. Indeed, he is. Jared Cole went away from qualifying for tomorrow night. Someone who knows finals night very well in both a broadcasting and playing capacity. Very good evening to good Chris evening. Mason. And Friday night's an interesting night because we only know half the field so far. This is where kind of the finals night qualification motor really gets into action. Yeah, and outside of, of Jared, really, we're, we're not too sure about the other two players who are going to qualify. It would be an absolute disaster if, if Jared didn't qualify from this position. One four out of four, a little fortunate in a couple of games, but as they say, you make your own luck. And just needs the, the single win tonight and his job done. We'll talk about that group in a bit more detail in a couple of seconds time. But let's break down the tournament bracket. You haven't been with us all week. This is what's happened so far. Group A was our center of attention on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And that was won by the ultra impressive American, Alex Spellman. Yeah, super consistent, wasn't he? He was just rock solid throughout. Dropping the one game, ironically, to tonight's uh, table topper in Jared Cole. But outside of the gap, that one, he was he was the man to beat. He most certainly was. As you can see there, Group C, Bradley Roos and John Worsley making their way through. And it was a dramatic afternoon. This is how the table limbered up in the end. Tom Sykes, the player at the top of the table overnight, finishing fourth. And Josh Richardson being picked at the post. He needed his dad to do him a favour. That didn't quite happen. I can imagine that the Uno game at Christmas isn't going to be fun now. Yeah, I don't think the drive home this evening would have been particularly pleasant. But yeah, he was a, he was a bit unfortunate. He dropped games that possibly he could have won. Um, saying that, though, he did win four of his games, 4-3 today, uh, but just couldn't get the job done in the end. But uh, John Worsley was outstanding, I think, and, and punched in some, some big numbers. And when we calculate the numbers for tomorrow night, I'm sure his, his running averages will be right up there with the best of them, including Alex Spellman. Most definitely right. So we're going to see them in action tomorrow evening, but our full focus tonight is on the action in Group B. This is how the table occupies itself at the halfway point. Jared Cole, word perfect so far. Four games, four victories. Neil Duff, where it was a mix and match evening, two wins, two defeats. But what we did see was when he reached the heights, he reached the heights. Yeah, his A game looks very good this week. He's already had a, a couple of averages of 100 plus, including a, a weekly high of 103.66. He, he, looks, he looks to be timing his run for his defense of the WDF Lakeside Trophy this year perfectly. And, um, yeah, it's hard to see him not being in the mix tonight, but it's wide open. Every one of those players in there, obviously, Jarrell Cole's going to qualify, but everybody else below him, they've got a shout. Chris Quantock, would solid be the right word to describe him last night? Yeah, a little bit erratic, but um, I don't think he's been playing a lot of darts of late, so that would have done him good last night to get a run out. We'll come back tonight a lot more confident, knows what to expect, and uh, he, know, he knows the task at hand. Well, let's see what the odds compilers think about tonight's action here at the Super Series. Now, outside of them three, Richie Howes the next in the betting at 16 to 1. And do we expect maybe a little bit more from Richie tonight? Yeah, he's not going to win. Well, I think it's very unlikely that he wins the group, but um, he'll be desperately disappointed in last night. Didn't get going and, and lost his two opening matches 4 0, 4 0. Got one back and then in the end really should have won that final match against Jarrah Cole. Had multiple darts to get it done. Couldn't quite get over the line in the end. But um, yeah, we know Richie. He will brush that off. He's, he is the, he's got the perfect mentality for this sport. He will just come again tonight and, and just go again. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Right, it's time for my favourite part of the programme when Mace is up here on the balcony. It's time for the bet builder. And tonight, I have not let Mace see an advanced sight of this bet builder so he can cast his own opinions 
blind. And it begins with the first match. It moves over to uh, Neil Duff and the player on 80 markets against Jared Cole. And then Chris Quantock to get the better of John Brown. It's a treble that plays just over three to one. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Where's the Spider-Man pajamas tonight? Um, yeah, this is, of course, a, a compilation of all the most popular bets on the exchanges. Um, yeah, I sort of get Cole to be housing on the back of what happened yesterday and the fact that that um, Jared will be full of beans. Uh, Duff versus Cole, yeah, I like that one because I think it's got six, seven legs in it, so there's every opportunity to, to hit a 180. Brown versus Quantock, Quantock to win at four to nine. I'm not sure about that one personally, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. And good luck if you've done, done that trouble or had uh, a combination of those bets in your bets tonight. Good luck. And it is 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Right, Chris is going to be a part of our commentary team this evening for all 10 of our live matches on Sporty Stuff TV and on the Super Series YouTube channel. And as he rightly mentions, Jared Cole and Richie Housen is going to kick off the evening's worth of action. A win for Cole means that he's qualified with nine games left to go in this Friday night session. Chris is going to see whether that's going to happen in the company of Laura Turner. Good evening, Laura. Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes. Chris Hopfoot sit down from the balcony Get to see these two just towing the hockey for the first time tonight. And as Henry and Chris were saying, it was a quite a tentative, slow start for, for Richie Hausen and did pick it up, did find a win in the end yesterday. But we've always got big expectations uh, when Richie Hausen takes to the hockey and it was all this man there from Chandler's Ford. King of the castle, he was king of the church here yesterday, topping the table. Richie Howes and the owl. First leg, Jared, you threw first. Very impressive, especially on the uh, World on. Seniors Tour. Made three finals this year, and pleased to say that Chris has uh, made it back down from, from the balcony into the commentary box. Yeah, I've got a special slide I go down. I'll let you 59. into that secret when you've done a few more shifts. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> uh, my step count is massive when I work here. Yeah, mine is on a double session day. It's uh, it's about 5,000, and that's just commuting 60. back and forth to the house. I was going to say, when you consider that we do spend a, you know, a good few hours sitting down in commentary at the same time. It's yeah, you have, to, you have to try and get some kind of movement in because it's, like I say, it's uh, a long time parked up. I was just about to say, Richie will, well, he won't be smarting because he's not that kind of guy, but he'll be, he certainly, on reflection, feel like he definitely should have been on four points by the end of the night because he had multiple darts to win this 43. one. Yeah, I caught up with him briefly as he arrived tonight and he knows himself, you know, he just couldn't really find anything in those first couple of matches and, and he kind of brushed them aside and thought, well, I just wasn't good enough. But he, he felt he was kind 100. of good enough, well, you know, well in the mix against yeah. Jared in the last match. And that's with carrying a, a bit of an injury that was obvious last night. He was trying to get a, a bit of 79. movement in the shoulder and it was stiffening up on him. And we did pick up on it there's there is quite a bit of movement in that shoulder. And he catches some big fish, so Six there's eight. more stress on the shoulder. All the snooker he's playing, the painting. The joinery. Amazing. I'm, yeah, amazing. <laughs> he don't play golf. 57. Yeah, but you know that, you know, if he did pick this, you know, picks golf or any other sport, he's gonna be he's gonna be good at it. Of course, of course he is. <laughs> People say in darts, 45. It, as with, I'm sure a lot of other sports, but with darts, you know, shoulder injuries, it, it just creates that additional tension in the arm, which just means you can't f just throw freely. No, you're you're waiting for that stabbing pain. It's the same. I had the I had tennis elbow for years and years and years, and sort Six of day. managed it with either having it completely numbed up or hot and cold. But in the shoulder, it's one of those stabbing pains that you're you're waiting to arrive. Makes the ace. Tennis elbow. 100. Yeah, there you Jared go. Dukar, 120. Well Look at you go. I'm not any good at tennis, by the way. I wish I was. <laughs> Getting shot on the first oh. leg. Jared Cole. Jared Cole's good at the 120 out. In fact, he's had some big finishes this week. Had a 148 last night. Second leg, Richie. Against Richie first. Harrison. Game on.
43. One hundred and twenty five. One hundred. Yes, yeah, so let's start in terms of averages, at least for, for housing. Sixty. In this match. That's what we saw last night. Possibly just needs uh, that little warm up again on the stage, but hasn't got a lot of time if he's going to find a spot in the uh, finals tomorrow. Yeah, he averaged 134. Averaged 80 for the night last night, 25% on the doubles, and that's that's um nearly nine points off of his 85 seasonal Richard. numbers. So it was a, a well below par in every metric. Where Jared averaged just over. 88 for the night, 32% on his doubles, which is very tidy. And the reason why I said it's most likely for Neil Duff to qualify, his numbers last night were impressive. 90.63 for the night, 64. 31% on Richard doubles, 13 from 42. All-round game is, that's rock solid. That's going to get you in most Saturday nights out of a, a Group B. 66. Got a car, 167. Ooh, needed the 57 to start the combination. So many players now 97. on those combinations starting on the second treble first. Yeah, we're a bit old school, aren't we? I just think you throw at the treble 20 so often. And Game shot on the second leg. It's Richie better there for Richie Howes, and he levels it up at one apiece. And going back to what you were saying about Neil Duff. In the matches he They're did like lose, he first, game on. came unstuck against John Brown in his opener, lost 4-2. And then also lost to Jared Cole, as did everyone else. But another 58. one that Jared just, just pinched on that final leg. I say pinched, he, he did win it in 12 darts and in the deciding leg. But Yeah, there, were, there was not a massive range in Neil's game. 83-84, then a 98-56, then an 84-88, and then... Bounces back up to a, a 95.27. Bang on, like you say, two sort 99. of ordinary games or performances and two very good performances. Like I said, usually eight points is the, is the goal on a Group B and he's, he's halfway there with four matches to play. 50. Jared, of course, already on eight points, and one win will mathematically guarantee him at least one of the top three positions. 100. How often have we seen it when, you, when you're chasing down just the one game, just those, you know that's all you need to get through. Sometimes you lose your edge ever so slightly because you're not focused on the attack and the big picture. It took me three attempts. <laughs> oh, God. Casing point there, then, Chris. <laughs> it is the your, your mentality completely changes. Ninety nine. It is weird. Eighty three. With your car, one hundred and eight. Oh, Houston's got six from here. 21 leaves 87. So treble 17. 56. Nearly tied it up, but we'll come back to 52. <coughs> 100. Where's your car? 52. Yeah, shake of the head there. Misses the single number, but corrects himself. So double 16. 20. Gotta do a car 82. Will that be? He's already taken out 120. Oh, now that's awkward now because he needs a treble. Doesn't get one. 46. Which your car 32. 32. Game shot on the third leg. Richie Housen. Just 
Slides it over the top, finds the target, and that's a break of throw for Richie Hausen. This is definitely an improvement on his opener last night. Both like Richie to throw first. On the Game on. Table top of Jared Cole. Yeah, maybe getting a bit more fortunate this evening. One hundred. Eighty one. This is where, when you're a thrown second in the match, Richie's found the break that he needs if he's going to win. One hundred and forty. Key is to hold on to the throw, the the uh, leg after. So often we see a break and then. That's what they say in tennis, isn't it? A, a break's 100. not a break unless you hold. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly the same here in darts. They're both in, yeah. One hundred and eight. His first max. Okay. Seventy-seven. Richie Ocar, eighty-one. Do you know what, Laura? I think that's his first max of the. Oh no. Forty. No. No, he, didn't, he didn't hit a 180 all session until the final game. Maybe he's just saving them all for, for yeah. Jared. Yeah. <laughs> 94. Richie O'Carr, 41. Yeah, he hit two in that defeat to Jared last night. Full three. An opportunity here to pull clear. Oof. Nine. Jared O'Carr, 149. Well, we've seen some big checkouts from Jared. This one's not going to go. So, how's them back to 32? 52. Stretches lead. Richie McCarthy, 32. 52. 52. Richie McCarthy, 32. Game shot on the fourth leg. Richie Housen. Yeah, well taken double there for 3 1 to Richie Housen. Fifth leg challenge to throw first. Game on. One hundred and eighty. And that familiar cry from referee Paul Hinks. One hundred and eighty. Will this one go in the way of Jared Cole? Sixty. Fifty-seven. Yeah, he's he's made reference to the. His plan of hitting a 180, then three trouble nine and three bullseyes. I'd be happy with the traditional nine, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 140. Any nine. 100. Talking of nines, Michael Van Gerwen had one today, didn't he, against... Chris Dovey, but congratulations to Gary Anderson, who won today's Players' Championship. He has had an outstanding couple of days. 92. Another player looking to peak at exactly the right time. Yeah, he looked wonderful, didn't he, all week? And you, you did call it. It would be a almost a crime if he didn't walk away with a title from this yeah, week. Yeah, he was just playing at such a one hundred and forty. Double count thirty-two. Slight adjustment there for double eight, but now across for double four. Game shot on the fifth leg, Jared Cole. Yeah, and a holder throw there for Jared Cole. But Richie Houston in a good position if he can maintain the scoring power. Six leg Richie so far. first, game on. Could open up the night with a win. Yeah, both had a sort of couple of spells across the five legs played so far. 87. It's a, it's a must win game. This one for Richie Harrison. And I say that because one hundred and thirty five. I expect Jared Cole to to cause at least two out of the other three or two of the three players trouble tonight. I expect him it's gonna pick up at least two wins tonight, you would think. 
One out of them. If that's 40. the case, he's going to do a bit of damage for Richie. Yeah, indeed. 59. It's a bit early for my brain to start engaging on the, all the uh, permutations, but I'm sure as we get to the business end of the night, the, the table's going to twist and turn. We saw it this afternoon. Oh, that was incredible, wasn't yeah, it? How that played out. Only one of the two who were outstanding yesterday, who topped the table. 99. Were, well, only they only saw one of them in John Worsley actually get it done because Bradley Ruse won five out of five today. And fair play to him. It was a, a wonderful interview Thank at you. the end. He was, well, he couldn't have been happier, which is lovely to see. Yeah, rightly so. And John Worsley, who finished second, started second in the day, but went right Richard down Carl to it. Had to win that very last game, otherwise it would have been a completely different outcome. And didn't he do it well with a 100-plus average? Single 20. Ooh, Richie chased the treble. 76. Jada Jakar, 153. Yeah, I think that was a... A miscount. He had 77 left, didn't he? 46. Richie Ocar, 54. No, he had 67. What did he have left? Yeah, 67. 67. Game shot and oh, the match. In. Richie Houghton. I'm not sure if that was under the bottom wire or above it. It was above it, confirmed by referee Paul Hinks. And, well, the perfect start to the night for Richie Houghton and... That defeat to Jarrah Cole last night when he had match starts. I hope it doesn't come back to burn him, but the perfect start for Richie Housen. Decent average, 86.07, not far off of his seasonal numbers. Four from nine on the doubles, 44%. When we come back, Chris Quantock takes on Neil Duff.
And a very warm welcome back to the Modus Super Seas, where we've completed our first game of the evening session. And it has seen Richie Housen in the winner's enclosure getting the better of Jared Cole by four legs to two, inflicting a first degree, uh, a, a, a first defeat in Group B upon Jared Cole. It's easy for me to say this early on in the night. Got a long even ahead of me, NR. Uh, right, let's get into our next match now. It sees Chris Quantock and Neil Dovko Toto. Now, similar mix match first nights as far as uh, this pair is concerned. Both picking up a couple of wins from their evening. Neil Duff, a uh, weekly winner uh, last time he was here at the Super Series. And I caught up with him early on this evening. Neil, mixed bag in terms of results last night. How would you assess your performances? Um, pretty much the same as I did with, with Group A. I feel like I'm playing pretty really good darts. Um, just wee stupid visits to the board and it's, it's cost me games. Um, I kind of sat and had a think about it today and I kind of felt like I'm not getting away with anything. I'm, I'm being punished every time. If I, if I make a mistake, I'm being punished for it straight away. Um, as I say, my scoring's there. Um, I felt lost. I was kind of unlucky. First match yesterday, doubles um, on the wire. Nine times out of ten, they're going to go. They just don't go. Um, so, yeah, it's up to me to correct that there and and get the job done tonight, so I'm here tomorrow. Going into tonight, if you play towards the levels we saw, especially at points in the middle of last night, do you feel like you'll give yourself every opportunity to get through? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, um, I kind of... I, sh I should have... In my, in my opinion, I should have beat Jared. Um I let the game get away with me with with uh, young John Brown, but I, I feel like I should have I should have beat Jared. Um, obviously, he took his chances. He's he's playing good stuff. Um, I think it's a really good standard of a group, and I, I'm going to have to just do my very best tonight to get through until tomorrow. Very sure the very best tonight, Neil. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Interesting insight from Neil Duff. He analyzes the game and his own game very well and he's well pretty much a a veteran now of this format he'd be more than aware that minimum requirement tonight is to pick up two wins and he has been playing some some very good stuff this week has had a couple of off games but that's pretty normal but this is you want to make the kind of start Richie Housen has made. And we could well see it come down to Jared Neal and Richie Housen. Of course, John Brown and Chris Quantock will have something to say about that. I, I think John Brown was a... First leg, Chris. Saying he felt a bit first. unfortunate last night. I'm pretty sure John Brown would be... Game on. ...feeling the same. Yeah, well, every outcome still possible at the moment. Yeah. Uh, especially with... Jared losing that opening game. Twenty-one. Yeah, Chris, arguably sixty. I think he he would say it himself. Probably he hasn't played as much. Bit of a slow start yesterday. Four-two loss to to Jared Cole in his opening 58. match. The opening match to get a four-nil win then over Richie Housen, but. Only mastering a, a 72 average in that win, so. When he only averaged, only averaged 83 for the night. Which I expect him to be far superior than that. Okay on the doubles, 30 percent, which is sort of okay. 58. Especially over the the course of the night. But he's certainly got another gear in there. He's he's a better player than than an 83. 100. And of course, Chris Quantock will be featuring in the uh, ADC belt match tomorrow, the Yorkshire and Humberside belt against Tom Sykes, who we saw crash out of yes. Group C. Yeah, the overnight leader of Group C failed to finish in the top two, but it was a very, very competitive group. The star of that group 121. today, in terms of results, if not numbers, was Bradley Ruse, but in terms of out-and-out -out numbers, 
John Worsley was a different gravy. 123. Chris Hill Carr, 63. Just produced it when he needed to, didn't he, John? And big, big numbers as well. Yeah, and let us into the little secret. That we've Neil got some bombolettes coming to support well, him tomorrow night. Looking forward to that. And they're going to be in fancy dress. Ninety-eight. Although, in Christian fairness, Carr, they've 20. only had twenty-four hours' notice, so maybe Being just a couple the first of bombolettes. Chris Bontoff. Yeah. <laughs> Full on Orinoco and Madame yeah. Charay. <laughs> the fact that I remember Womble's names. Well, you don't live far from there, do you? Not too far. Come on. He's come along as Great Uncle Bulgaria, yeah. can you, Chris? <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> 100. <laughs> 100. I say you're only as old as you feel, and well, at the moment, Uncle Bulgaria would be about right, I think. <laughs> 55. 134. An outside chance on the back of the 118 finish to break through in leg one and now he's just got to be a bit careful he doesn't slip up 60. here with the darts in leg two yeah you're right Quantox just got himself into a position where he can really forge ahead and one create 40. the opportunity to break the duff throw well he, he's to be honest he's, he's sort of going under the radar isn't he a little bit Chris Quantox Something we certainly couldn't say about Tom Sykes. 134. Chris Carr, one hundred. Coming into it, I guess we could for, for Dave. Yeah, where's the break, breakdown here? He's on the second leg. Much Chris more Quantock. natural, and Chris Quantock finds that adjustment and pins double eight. Yeah, it's on a it's on a very similar line. It's it's more the of a, the weight first, of throw on. after dart one, and you go inside. You've you've got the line worked out. It's just about getting the feel for the length. Forty. Even though, even when I'm not trying to be. But Neil will begin to, especially after last eight. night, you start to, well, maybe it won't, but if it was, I'll, I'll speak from my experience, I'd be thinking, no, oh, just not my night, is it? <laughs> it's just not my group, not my week. Because he was arguably outside of 100. Alex Spellman, one of the best players in Group A. Yeah, produce some big averages at times, but consistent as well. well. His range, unlike Spellman, whose range was sort of 20 by 18 or so points, Niels went from a high of 103.66 to the odd one in the 70s. And that's, a, that's a big old range. 140. That's my, always my advice to, to players coming through. Just try and narrow that range down. One hundred and thirty-five. Chris Hill Carr, one hundred and forty-five. Yeah, I wonder how important that visit there is going to be for Neil Duff because he will come back for seventy-one and find one of the breaker throws he's going to need Neil if he's going to win. Seventy-one. It's been pressured though with that final dart trouble nineteen. He's going to get one. No, he's not. Well, he's going to get a one. But he's not going to get one dart Chris at all. Forty-eight. This will really hurt. Wow. He's really dodged one there 40. if he can find tops or tens. It's a good marker for Neil, but just comes under. 20. Official car, 20. So double 10 here for a 3 0 lead, double 5. 15. Neil the car, 20. And pair of them bit of double trouble in this third leg well it's it's a pivotal leg isn't it for a couple of differing reasons really getting shot on the third leg Duff, it was to 
effectively stay in the match, and he's done just that. Fourth leg, Neil, to throw first. Game on. One out of them, 40. Yeah, we're in the fourth leg, and that's the first 140 we've seen from Neil Duff, and that's been a real feature of his game, being scoring. Too many wayward visits, but that's a super what recovery after a small one. One hundred. Back in again. One hundred and forty. Well, this is the kind of leg he needed, just to, just to maybe give him some, some. Some kind of inspiration. 100. Neil Lucar, 100. Some of them feel good endorphins coursing around the body. Double 19. Game shot yeah, on the fourth leg. leg Neil Duff. From start to finish, 12 darter, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, brilliant adjustment after the disappointment of uh, hitting the five. Oh, fifth leg, Chris is through first. Himself, Game didn't didn't he? Didn't he? Wise up. <laughs> And he found the 57 and slotted away the double 19. 140. I mean, you have missed a, quite a few opportunities, especially as, as we saw Neil do in the first two legs. Getting that first leg under your belt, it's, it's relief, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's so easy for your, for, your just, for your head to drop. But then experience, 64. guile. All play their part, and he does have that never say die attitude. 100. Some players that like getting, you know, getting embroiled and being in the in the bones of a match. 48. And you have others that just like to win it easily. He's. I like to do the latter, but <laughs> it ends up normally being <laughs> the other. 140. 100. Yeah, this is another solid leg 100. from Neil Duff. Neil the car, what in 20 yeah, he's out in 12 in the last leg. This is for back-to-back -back 12s, and he's got to go for it. 11 ball. 76. Chris Ricard, what yeah, a bit of a flyer now. there, but this is not easy and not going to go for Chris Quantock, so Duff back for 45. 99. Neil Lucar, 45. Five and tops. 25, crucial car 50. And again, more missed opportunities. His doubling is just two from 12. Game shot on the fifth leg, Chris Quantock. Chris Quantock, three from 12. Six leg, Neil to throw the first, game on. And how important will those missed doubles from Duff prove to be? One hundred and forty. Finding himself chasing once again. There's plenty 46. of fight in him tonight, isn't there? Certainly digging in. And he's eighty five. He's averaging in the nineties, ninety one point four to Chris Quantock's eighty three. Yeah, one hundred and forty. You mentioned where he's two from twelve, only sixteen percent on the uh, checkouts. Yeah, that's that's and he's been punished every time he's missed, doesn't he? Has he? indeed. Eighty-five. And if I'm honest, there's a part of me thinks rightly so at this level. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But so often you you'll see it where a 59. player will miss doubles, but get a second bite of the cherry. Not so with Neil Duff tonight. 
57. Oh, absolute disaster with Quantock back on 256 and unable to 16. find any Near big the car, one of Fifty-eight. Tough horse, though, unable to find a treble. But Chris Quantock most certainly One can. One hundred and forty. The other now car. All the pressure on Neil Duff. One dart. Fifty-six. Chris Quantock fifty-six. Him, would it? He could have had this match sewn up right there and then, but. The doubling. Game he shot just on knew, the match. didn't Chris he? Quantock. And it is Chris Quantock who somehow gets the win, and you can see the disappointment from Duff, and that's another one that's definitely got away. Two from 13 on the doubles. 88.11 the average for Neil. 84.18 for Chris Quantock, but it's Quanny that moves on to six points and well into a qualifying position. When we come back, Richie Housen back in action, and our first look at John Brown this evening.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Chris Quantock got the better of Neil Duff by four legs to two before the break, meaning that he moves on to six points and leaves Neil Duff in that quagmire of players on four and two at the bottom end of the table. John Brown can make a, 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 a triplet of players on four points if he can get the better of Richie Housen in this one. Watching this one in the commentary box is Laura Turner and Chris Mason. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, our first look at JB, who, well, had a bit of a mix bag last night. Ended up with a running average of 81.1. And well, we saw examples of him being a far better player than that. It just all seemed to go a little wrong for him. Yeah, made a really, really strong start, didn't he, JB? And had that 90 average and a 4-2 win over Neil Duff. And like you say, just couldn't quite back it up. First leg, like Richie, the third first. I don't know what you think, Game on. Chris, but this group already has that feeling that we had this afternoon where you think the informed player and, you know, the, what the table toppers are going to... You know, just absolutely plough forward. And yep. actually, it's the the ones that we were perhaps hesitating over 100. that have won it through so far. Well, we, we sort of give Bradley a, an outside chance, but I think we were so impressed with Tom and John Worsley last night that we just didn't see... 100. We didn't see anyone really going through the card. Maybe possibly one of either Worsley or, or Tom, because obviously they were out to play each other, so only one of them had possibly gone through the card, but... I didn't expect Bradley to do it and do it in the manner in which he did. All credit to him, a deserved part of finals night. And of course, the last time he was here, he did exactly the same. 44. And got all the way to the final, only missing out on a place in Champions Week at the hands of Neil Duff, who picked up his first weekly title. One hundred and thirty-one. Of course, because this is a group of five. You know, we've got odd number players and we've already seen Housen. And we just wonder, does that, do you think that maybe gives you a little bit of an advantage when you come into that third game over Brown? This is Brown's first game. Housen's already got a win under his belt. Yeah, um, I for sure think it's an advantage. You're, you're coming in cold. And especially when you're playing someone who's, who's picked up an important win, they're going to be feeling 46. confident. Richie Carr, 126. Always need a, even if it's just a couple of legs to find your feet, it'd be, it could be a couple of legs you find yourself behind. 54. Yeah, you don't have a great deal of time in a race to four. No, it's quick fire stuff, isn't it? Very rapid. In the blink of an eye, you can find yourself 2 0 down and right up against it. And 55. then, of course, you start trying Richard to car 72. force the issue. This is. Very comfortable so far. Double 16 for 1 0. 40. One hundred and thirty five. Read your car 32. So, house and back for 32 would be a holder throw. Game shot on the first leg. Reach your holder throw there for Richie Housen. Second leg, John, the throw first. Game on. 42. Yeah, that's a real opportunity already for Richie Howes. And if he can just find some more points on that 42. 43. Yeah, looking at the night well, from right. John Brown last night. Started very, very well with a 4-2 win over Neil Duff. He averaged 90 and a half, 4 out of 9 on the doubles, 1-180. One, one Efficient in all areas. One and went down 4-1 to Jared with a pretty much identical average, 82 and change. Missed 7 at a double, which turned out to be costly. 
134. And then played Chris Quantock, who averaged just shy of 88, who was very good. But again, missed darts at doubles. One from seven for John. And then got beat 100. 4 0 in the only win of the night for Richie Housen, who averaged 85, 40% on the doubles, took out a 118. And again, a couple of missed opportunities for John Brown in there. So he's left himself with work to do. 59. And from being at the bottom of the table, if Richie Harrison wins here, he takes himself into a qualifying position. 85. Yeah, we did predict quite a bit of movement. Well, it was such a bizarre run of results last night. It, it, it was going to play out like that. 45. Round the first one down to a finish, but Richie Housing looking to set something up here. 99. John O'Carr 121. He needs to find treble 17. Can't, so looking at treble 16. 85. Richie O'Carr 74. Double 16 once again, just inside, so slight adjustment. 66. John Ucar, 36. So a chance for John Brown, but over to that awkward double nine. That's why we don't like it. No There's score. no breakdown. There's Richie no Ucar double four eight. and a half. Double two. Four. John Ricard, 36. Well, what a chance for 2 0 for Richie Housen. Again, back over for double nine and going for it. Game shot on the second Gets leg. It this time. Down. I'm on a piece. Third leg, Richie to throw first. Game on. One hundred. The one 96. ADC representative in this group, and that's Chris Quantock flying the ADC flag very well at the moment. He's in position two on six points. One hundred. Jar Cole, despite the Defeat to Richie Housen in match one. Still on top on eight. 93. Neil Duff on four. As it stands right now, Richie Housen on four and John Brown on two. I feel like we should just have this phrase on repeat, but the next game again, Neil Duff taking on Jared Cole. 100. That's going to be a... Big for both. Yeah, potential table changer once again. Yep, one keeps... Well, one a win for Jared and he's... Guaranteed through. A win for 100. Neil, and he's got one foot in tomorrow night's finals. One hundred and forty. Richie Car one hundred and four. Let's change the look of the leg. That one forty from JB. Old school way for one oh four. Sixty nine. Richie Car sorry, John Your Car seventy two. So single sixteen. Leaves him the tops. Fifty two. Richie Car thirty five. She did mess around a little bit with the doubles in the leg before. 
I want to see this off and does. on the third leg, Richie Housen. Two one. Fourth leg, John de Thru first. Game on. Forty-four. Sixty. One hundred and thirty-five. Yeah. Good adjustment after the first one in the treble five. He's been very up and down, hasn't he? John Brown in the scoring phases. 140. Both are a little bit guilty of that. Only the 1140 between them. Or 1140 apiece between them, should I say? 140. Oh, thank you. Fifty-seven. And again, the way that Richie's darts land uh, does try to force the issue to try and get it underneath, but it's got quite a big barrel and it just blocks out the bed. Eighty-five. Yeah, I'm both using quite a, a long stem. It's incredible how he gets them in there. Ninety-five. John Nukar, ninety-seven. So single to 20, just to tee up tops. Richie Car 149. This isn't out of the reach of Richie Housen. Part one done. Needs to treble 19. Yeah, and I think that reaction 76. just <laughs> John Car sums 40. it up there for Richie Housen. Yeah, tops for 2-2. Two, two. And the longer this match goes on, the more John Brown will be thinking to himself, you well, on the four flag. you John don't Brown. want it, pal, I do. Fifth leg, Richie to throw first. Game on. The opportunities that Richie Housen's missed. I mean, he could could really look back at this and think he could have he's had opportunities to go out 4-0, but he's, he's allowing John that, that extra time on the stage just to warm up, settle down. Yeah, get more and more 45. settled and, and more and more fancy the job at hand. Fifty-nine. Played many a game where you're just sort of hanging in there, and you you know you're just hanging in, but at some point you think, well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this one. One hundred and twenty-five. Eighty-five. Yeah, good adjustment there for Richie Housen. 81. I think JB needs at least a ton, and that's a good start for it. One of the yeah, that's a great eight. visit there from John Brown. First one out of the match. Great timing. 100. Housen just not able to... Return the favour. So John Brown, good opportunity to set something up and get that break he still needs. And if he can nick a treble here, fifty-seven. Yeah. Richie Car one hundred and fifty. See by the reaction, he knows how important it was to just take a treble off. He's still got work to do coming back at one twenty. Treble eighteen. Nice here. John Car one hundred and twenty. Bit of a blocker, just moving over. Yeah, always, always going to be 44. tough, wasn't it? Ridge your car, 52. Isn't easy. He's trying to get that little bit of lift and make the adjustment for the distance. Double 16 once again for Housen. Getting shot on the fifth leg. Richie Housen. 
Back in front again. Just keeps getting pegged back. Six legs, John to throw first. Game on. Forty one. Fifty five. A few occasions where they've both kind of kicked off with those troublous visits, neither have been able to kind of one take advantage from the off. Yeah, when well, one well, when when one goes off the boil, the other one sort of tends to follow, and then when one picks up, the other one follows suit. You find that, don't you? The certain eight. players that you've probably seen, some some can just say what we say, play the board and just play their own game, but a lot of players very reactive. Yeah, for sure that. The one that springs to mind always is is James Wade. If if you averaged eighty five, he'd average ninety. If you average ninety five, he'd average hundred. If you have hundred, he average hundred and five. It's just the way he plays. He's made a very good career out of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Sixty. Fifty five. First to a finish, and he's going to need a three trouble visit to get himself down to a finish himself. So, this one is going to a decider. First one of the night to go the full seven legs. Sixty-five. Yeah, just see. Thousand words, the mouth. Words, the mouth, mouth the words. Wow. 125. Yeah, sometimes that's, that's all you can do is just do exactly that and say, wow, where has that come from? Double five. No score. No, that's a, a bit if of a disaster. Because he's all the way back to 85. So even if Richie doesn't Take this out, and the shot's on. John Brown's going to come back now at 85 with Richie Harrison waiting on 24 for the game. Changed his tax on the 19 route, so double 14. seventy one. Yeah, that's unlucky in double Richard seven. Richard 24. Same kind of split from 18 to nine. It's no one's favourite. Yeah, it was almost the perfect recovery. As it is, Richie Howson is going to make it. Richie Howson. Two from two, and he does go from bottom of the table right back into a qualifying position into third on six points with Chris Quantock. He has played two matches, of course. There are the numbers, 80.61, 77. 97 for John Brown. When we come back after the break, well, another big match. Neil Duff facing Jared Cole.
And we're going to see Luke Littler here next week at the Super Series looking to complete the perfect hat-trick when it comes to titles. Before the break, Richie Housen who made a hat-trick of TV finals in the seniors this year. Got the better of John Brown by four legs to two. And he's now in with a squeak of qualification. Right, next up for us, a heavyweight Super Series battle as Neil Duff takes on Jared Cole. Laura Turner and Chris Mason are down in commentary. Thank you, Henry. Yes, and it is... Uh there are not too many players that have played more Super Series matches than these two over the past couple of years. And well, first in the like Neil the first. The action got underway. Game on. Neil was fairly adamant that this was one that certainly felt like he could have won last night. As it was. One hundred. What, by the narrowest of margins, full three. And it was, a, it was an intriguing match that 59. sort of went back and forth, but Neil Rude, 11 missed darts at a double, and that was his undoing in this one. Yeah, well, you mentioned that see, they've both played at a 81. the Super Series on numerous occasions. This is actually the 11th meeting, and at the moment it's 7-3. In, in favour of Cole, but Cole's won the last three matches here. We have to go back to Monday, where Neil Duff did beat Cole 4-0, but since then, every every game's gone 4-3, but has gone the way of Jared Cole. Yeah, yeah, and that, will be, that will be in Neil's head. And that will do one thing or another to yeah. Neil. <laughs> that will either fire him up and spur him on, or it'll frustrate him if he starts missing doubles again. Yes, if he starts giving Jared opportunities and Jared then starts taking those opportunities. 85. That's when it becomes frustrating. Okay, another loaded match, just in, for both of them, really, but for completely different reasons. Because a win here, as we've mentioned, for Cole, and he knows that he's going to be back tomorrow night. But 59. Lost for Neil Duff Neil here, and he, he's starting to get cut adrift. Yeah, and what he starts to leave himself a, a little bit vulnerable to being. Potentially, 97. like you say, cut adrift from the field. And, well, he's on plus one in terms of leg difference, but any defeat here and will, of course, 40. go to zero in terms of leg difference. And that's where Getting shot on the first he's leg. not Hilda. in particularly bad shape because John Brown is on minus 10 Second and Richie Harrison is on first, minus David. one. But that's the ideal start for Neil Duff. 59. 85. 40. Mm, only 40. Not the start that Jared would have wanted to this match so far. Ninety-nine, he seventy-nine, twenty-nine in his def opening defeat against Richie Housen. Lost that four-two, and you just have to wonder, knowing uh, as we've mentioned, knowing the fact that you just need the one. Sounds so easy. <laughs> I got four yesterday. I only need <laughs> one today. Do you end up chasing it down? One hundred and twenty. One hundred. One hundred and thirty-four. Yeah, had a good switch there for Cole. If we won one four eight. Jared does like to move around the board. One hundred. Jared, you can't one hundred and forty-eight. Yeah, he's a he's a good counter. Nothing wrong with that element of his game. 44. Neil the car 117. It's a bit of a chance here for Neil Duff to extend his lead to 2-0. But does need a treble 19. Gets it, so tops. Game shot on the second leg. Clinical. Neil Duff. Two from two. And the ton plus out. 
Det var nearly through first. Game on. Sixty one. Yeah, Jericho not happy with that, the positioning. Looking to switch. 96. Obviously, it's very hard not to talk about Jericho without mentioning that spectacular 160 checkout. But the 100. reason he went ball ball is exactly what you've seen there. His The way his darts land, they tend to cover yep. a lot more than what we can see from this angle. And he, One he does 40. throw at, at that angle at the board, but sometimes if they almost sort of just maybe click off the wire on their way in, they will even, they'll kick across even more. 46. And there you can see they just lean to the right. And 57. When they go underneath, it makes it very difficult. One hundred. Yeah, and that's a that's a perfect yeah. example, isn't it? What we were just talking about. So if you imagine if that dart, which on that one sixty was like that, but in the travel, so further over to the right, he had little to no chance in following it in. Duff's kind of have a. 85. Yeah, they're really neutral, aren't they? Considering as well, he's, he stands well left, doesn't he? And he, he leans as well. Ninety-five. That's nearly a Near the car, wonderful bit of work around the blocker. Trouble 19. Oh, he's going to... 93. Have Jared to keep Jukar, his fingers crossed that Jared doesn't take this 73. Game shot on the third class. leg. Jared Cole. Considering what has happened so far in the match, he's so, shown some great composure and a Fourth bit of grit to there. First. Game on. Would have been very easy just to have thought, here we go again. 60. One hundred. One hundred and nineteen. Yeah, Cole really starting to play himself back into this match. Warming to the task. Indeed. One hundred and forty. So there's a bit of disparity in the averages, as you can see there. Ninety-four point two for Duff. Just under eighty for Jared. One hundred. Kind of number that is becoming a familiar one for Duff at the moment. One hundred and forty. Yeah, this is a good response from Neil Duff. Fifty-eight. Near the car. One hundred and twenty-one. A chance for a, another twelve dart it. And he's double 18. Game shot on the fourth Pretty flag. Neil Duff. Very, very tidy stuff from Neil Duff to re-establish a couple of leg cushion. Fifth flag, Neil Duff first. Game on. And this is big. This takes Neil Duff back into a qualifying position. 60. We saw Neil Duff take that one, two, one out. To win actually over Richie Housen yesterday. His best match uh, his best match of the evening. Don't know if everyone agrees with that kind of route as well, going the twenty five first, but he, he uses it very effectively. Yeah, I think I think if you have no if you have no intention of going ball at the end of it, get rid of it in the first start because if you hit the twenty five, I mean if you hit the ball it's thirty nine thirty two. If you hit the twenty five even if you miss the trouble 20 and it two singles, 
You're going to come back on 85. a potential two darter that doesn't need a, a treble in the combination. You'll leave yourself 56, of course. 58. I'll start floating in the five from Duff. So didn't leave himself on something. 60. Would have wanted to get a bit more out of that as well. Yeah. But all barring a... Yeah, and it's not going to happen 59. here for Jared. So he's Never got six at one, one, six, one, one, six for four, one. Yeah, need stops. Game, shot on the match, nil Get stops for, well, by my reckoning, a third ton plus out of the match and he makes it four from four on the doubles 98.25 the average 12 scores of a ton or more compared to just seven from jared cole and jared cole still having to wait for that one win that guarantees his place in tomorrow night but a very very good performance from neil duff when we come back john brown faces chris quantock
Wow, welcome back to the Motor Super Series. What a performance we saw from Neil Duff before the break to get the better of Jared Cole by four legs to one. Doing so with three ton plus checkouts, four out of four in the finishing all told, and an average of 98.25. And it really has bunched things up in the group table. It could bunch up even more depending on what happens here. Chris Quantock and John Brown is the halfway house on our Friday night. And Chris Mason and Laura Turner are on hand to describe the action. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, that was a that was a great performance from Neil Duff. And in my in the back of my mind somewhere, looking through my notes, I think he's done that before this week, four out of four, but finishes of one one six, one one seven, and one two one was a very good performance against the table topping Jared Cole, and that sort of was a more revenge than repeat, that's for sure. Yeah, indeed it was. And that was done with like a bit of venom. Yes, first. very much so. And Game on. I was slightly worried for Duff after that opener against Chris Quantock, where he was 15% on his doubles. Oh, no mess in there, 100% to get that win over Cole. Yeah, and that's, how, that's the, the mentality or maybe experience of that bounce back ability. Like you say, he lost 4-2 to Chris Quantock in, in a game, another game he should have won. Let's have it right. It was... It was there for the taking, but credit to Chris Quantock. He took his chances. But this is very much a, a must-win game for John Brown. 100. Completion of this match. All the players will have completed two rounds of games tonight and will have two to play. 40. As it stands, Jared Cole on eight, Chris Quantock six, Neil Duff six, Richie Hansen six. One hundred. Those three separated by a six-leg swing in leg difference. Quanny on plus five, Duff on plus four, Richie Hansen on minus one, and eighty-five. Well, I could become his undoing. Richie Hansen, no easy task in the next one because. 80. He faces a, a very informed Neil Duff. This could come down, Laura, to the Chris Quantock Richie Hansen match. Yeah, genuinely wouldn't surprise me. I know, I know who Neil Duff and Richie Hansen will be cheering on here, and it'll be John Brown. 45. John Nicar, 74. JB in a good position here so far. Single 20, leaves him tops. 54. Chris Ricard, 117. 17. Now Quantock for tops. 77. John Ricard, 20. And always bent the wire there, but John Brown back for double 10. Game shot on the first leg, John Brown. Yeah, he does get it on this time of asking, so 1-0, John Brown. Second leg, Chris to throw first. Game on. Yeah, just what he, just what he needed. Ninety-six. Ninety-six. Fifty-nine. Yeah, for JB, since winning that opener yesterday against Neil Duff, has lost the uh, last five games. Do you think time's running out? Yeah, yeah, that's why it's it's, it's a must-win game. It has well, he's one hundred. He's got two more to play at the completion of this one. One against Neil Duff, and one against Jared Cole. And if he has any aspirations of qualifying. He's got to win this one and those two. Yeah, and potentially still need Six a few eight. results to go his oh way. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, his undoing will ultimately become the minus nine leg difference unless he can not only win, but win big. 139. Yeah, once again, though, making good inroads here. 96. John Ricard, 32. 
Down to double 16 after 12, potential 13. Getting shot on the second oh, leg, John Brown. 14, duck leg, but that is a break of throw, and now John Brown's got the darts to take a 3 0 lead. And as you just said, Chris, if he's going to win, he, he wants like to John win. The first. Yeah, and this, Game is, on. this is the sort of level of play I, I expected, and I'm sure John Brown expected. 134. One hundred. I will say that one of the things that we've seen with Chris, with, uh, Chris is he's sometimes a bit slow 44. out of the traps. Yep. Yeah, he just doesn't get out of the gate quick enough. Fifty-five. He's in a he's in a good spot though. In currently in. That joint second position. His leg 81. difference is okay. A win here if he can produce a, a comeback win will put him in a great position, of course. He'll be the first player to actually join Jared at the top of the table on eight points for what feels like a, a lifetime. 140. Yeah, we do imply that sometimes just chasing that one win not always 41. as easy as it sounds. John Nakar, 102. Jared yet to find it. Forty-two. One hundred and thirty-one. John Nakar, nice set up play there for Quantock, but. Easier finish here for John Brown. Single 20 for tops. Done that flatty again. Game shot on the third he's been John Brown. Practicing. Four by Chris to throw first. Game on. If you can if you can do it, it's sensible play. It just keeps that bed open, but it was risky. Look at Josh Richardson One earlier. And did that cost him qualification? Yeah, I was going to say it was quite a wild attempt, wasn't it? Kind of flew up way past the oh, tops. Yeah, but it was not even close, was it? I mean, even if it had found tops, at least, you know, at least they'd have had darts at double turn. 180! Now, well, back to back 180s here for Chris Quantock. Where has this come from? I did say 82. sometimes he's a Chris bit Carl, slow at the gate when it comes to the start of matches. One hundred and twenty-nine. Oh. Well, I said nothing, and I didn't want to jinx it. <laughs> and I was holding my breath. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> nice touch there from John Brown, offering his commiserations. What a moment that would have been for Chris Quantock. 59. There have been 12. these kind of flashes of form, haven't there, from, from Chris Quantock. Game shot on the fourth leg, Chris Quantock. And that equals the best leg of the week, 10 darts. Yep, a beautiful leg. Fifth leg, John, to throw first, game on. Is it too late? It's been a great moment. 29. He'll have that downloaded to his phone just to... Might show it to Tom. <laughs> yeah. Did oh. you see this from last night, Tom? <laughs> one hundred and forty. He followed it up with another one. Yeah, Tom just wasn't quite hitting it, was he, earlier today? Like no, he was yesterday. Um, the what he was doing so well yesterday when if you wanted in the double first dart or one in his second dart, he was in his third, wasn't he? And that 59. ability just wasn't it wasn't there for him this afternoon. Ninety-nine. Now John Brown is just trying to fend off this fight back, and Chris Quantock has stolen the darts in this fifth leg. One hundred and twenty-eight. He's averaging fifty-four and a half. 
courtesy of that 10 data, of course. 98. Ninety six. Yeah, can't talk back for seventy eight, but he'd be on any kind of pressure. No is the answer. It doesn't even leave the the one seventy. The tops to break through and go with him one. He will be back at double ten. One hundred and thirty-five, Fisher Car twenty. This is to save the match with John Brown waiting on forty-nine and he shows Chris Pontoff. Great bottle there. Would have been easy to have snatched that one low. Or had a bit of a flyer. Looks like Chris to throw first. And game on. Attack the double. And you really can say it's been a, a game of two halves, completely dominated by John Brown in the first three legs. And Chris Quantock. Ninety six. Oh. Mounting a really, really strong comeback. Yep. Eighty-five. All starting, of course, with that missed double twelve for the nine. <coughs> Ninety-six. One hundred on it. His first, the third of the game. 60. Yeah, and what a time to get your first. Yeah. Will he be getting his second? 100. Yeah, he'll take that. 96. John Ricard, 136. To move on to four points and keep his slim hopes alive oh Ain't what a way to down. wrap things up well highly entertaining game there we've very nearly seen yet another nine data here at the live lounge in Portsmouth but John Brown will be more than happy with that 88.91 90.79 for Chris Quantock three one eight is in the game one three six finish what we needed was a 1-4-1 finish, and then we would have had a, a nine darter, of course. But 50% on the doubles for John Brown, a worthy winner in the end. Well, when we come back after a short break, Richie Housen will face Neil Duff.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where before the break, we saw John Brown get the better of Chris Quantop by four days. Soon. Mace the ace, Chris Mason, is here alongside me to assess what we've seen so far. Right, these are the results from the five games that we've seen so far this evening. And the power really has been with the throw so far this evening. Only Richie Housen has won a game against it. Yeah, and he's the only player so far this evening alongside uh, Chris Quantock who is unbeaten and it's uh, it's some return in form for, for Richie Housen. Couldn't buy a win in the opening two games yesterday. Starts tonight off with back-to-back -back wins and he's in a qualifying position now. And we kind of expect, didn't we, Richie, to, to come out the tracks flying considering what happened last night because we know the type of play he is. He isn't going to have two nights of that sort of standing. Yeah, he's got a great mentality, hasn't he? He just sort of brushed himself down. A little bit disappointed last night, but he's not the kind of guy that will just dwell on things. He will... He would just come out, throw his darts. If they go, they go. If they don't, they don't. You know, he just he just gets on with it. And he, he does have a great mentality. And I'm sure that's uh, down to why he's had so much success in the last couple of years. Well, certainly another player with a great mentality and a, a player who thinks very much about his game is Neil Duff. Now, he has had a start to the evening which has seen him lose to Chris Quantock and then beat Jared Cole. But goodness me, the finishing in this game against Jared was absolutely exemplary. Yeah, it was beautiful, wasn't it? Starting with that 25, trouble 20, double 18 for a 1-2-1. A one one. Back to, well, he, he got the win here with the... Uh, one one six, and I'm, I'm sure there was a one one seven in there a little bit earlier in the game, and ended the match four from four, 98 average, and again putting himself right on the cusp of qualifying. We've got a few players uh, in that area right now. Have those first two games summed up Neil Dust's week so far? Yeah, I mean he shouldn't have lost to Chris Quantock. He was he was by far the better player, but ultimately you've, you've got to hit the doubles. You know, scores for show. Um, yeah, scores for show, doubles for dough, and. Uh, ultimately, if you miss doubles, you, you're going to pay the price, and he, and he has done. But he will, f he will feel this week uh, a lot of games have passed him by that he certainly will feel like he could have won. How would you assess Chris Quantock's night to press? Yeah, a little bit better. He, he tends to be, I think Laura picked up on it very well, He's he tends to be a little bit slow out of the blocks, and that's caught him out a couple of times. But once he's into the meat and taters of a match, he's all right. I said, meat and taters, goodness me. Right, let's have a look at the table there. Now, the halfway point of our night session. Jared Cole at the top of it, but he's looking a bit precarious now, isn't he? Yes, it's two matches played and, and two defeats, and he knows he's just that one win away, and I've been in that scenario, and it's, it is horrendous. You're just thinking, come on, just... Just get over the line, get the win, get it done, and, and then you can relax a little bit. And, you know, if he, if he, if he gets a win um, in, his, in his next match out, he'll probably go on and win the fourth one, all right. But, um, yeah, he's just, he's, I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to win one. It just guarantees it. But it's looking a bit dodgy now because the pack have just closed in on him. But and someone's going to join him in the next but match, But should Jarrett's experience here make him a bit too long in the tooth for that? Yeah, I just think it's the way the matches have, have, have played out so far. Uh, Richie Housen was decent enough against him. And then uh, in his, in his me next match against Neil Duff, Neil Duff was brilliant, wasn't he? So it's sometimes you just got to hold your hands up, wait for the opportunity to present itself and take it. Well, yes, that is most certainly the case. Right. Now, it's been an interesting week this week. Next week, well, it's a little bit fun, isn't it, Mace? Yeah, it's a, it's a real special lineup next week. That, that Group A is, well, it, it's a, a Champions Week esque type of lineup, isn't it? We've got four previous weekly winners, and we've got, of course, the back to back champion in Luke Littler. Run it back one more time. <laughs> do have a bumper lineup next week. Luke Littler, as you can see, they're back in action, looking to make it three Champions Weeks from three. But right now, all eyes are on Group B and who will progress to finals night tomorrow? And we were saying before, we kind of thought Jared Cole had it all sorted, all set up, ready, and just hasn't found that win. And now he's going to be joined on eight points by either of these two on the stage now, Richie Hausen or Neil Duff. And Chris has hot-footed down from the balcony, and I think you'll agree 
No, Duff really did step it up, but Richie Let's Housen's like Richie also finding first. a bit of form. I think he's going to have to find maybe another level, Game really, on. though, if he's going to make any inroads against Neil Duff. Yeah, and he'll be playing with a, a lot more confidence, and that, that's key to to any player's game, of course. You, you just need that confidence and that feel-good factor of, of winning matches. And that's something he's had in abundance so far tonight. He is unbeaten. And 59. it's been a far superior level of play to what we've seen from him last night in the opening couple of matches. 100. Well, we could break this down, couldn't we, and make it sound really simple. Richie Housen has got the darts. All he's got to do is hold his throw, and he's going to win three from three. Did you leave me an old person sweeter? I did. Do you <laughs> like them? <laughs> <laughs> I took two for myself. Okay. Anyone uh, needs to know. Yeah. Yeah, Bless you. Dishing out some Werther's originals backstage here, so I just thought, you know, Chris I will, like I will have a shave tomorrow, yeah. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take decades off me. 97. Or I'll just wear a crash helmet. Oh, Richie in a dominant position in this opening leg. And if you are going to beat Neil Duff, that's One the way to do it. you just got to keep him on the back foot. Easier said than done. The form he showed, of course, in the last match. Well, I guess when Neil kind of steps away from the tournament, you know, when it's over and he gets the time to reflect, I guess... Quite a few chances he's missed. Timing's just been off and people have stepped in and yeah. just swept up. Every mistake has 18. been punished. Because figure-wise, you would you could easily argue he's been amongst the top players throughout the whole week. Oh, statistically, when we crunch the numbers for tomorrow's night's finals night, I presume Neil Duff will be in that mix of six. I should imagine he's up there as... Certainly in the top three statistic. 100. Richie looking at the stats 80. this week. Well, double 10 required here for Hausen. And double 10 on the first he finds. Flag. Richie Hausen. Yeah, that's a nice 17. 17 dart opening hold a throw for Richie Hausen. Second leg needle to throw first. Game on. He was listening, wasn't he? Just hold your throat. That's it. <laughs> Four holds. Job done. 85. Oh, Duff, Duff did produce his best performance of last night against Richie Housen. 98-56. And it was a 4-0 win as well. Yeah, another 1-2-1 one, one to win the match. And his high of the night so far is very similar. 98-2-5. Yeah, I spoke to him after um, he 60. produced that 101, I think it was a 101 against Alex Spellman and still lost. And yeah, he did. Yeah, he was on the wrong end. <laughs> he was on the wrong end once again. And yeah, he said to him, I don't, just don't know what I've got to do to beat him. I just can't. 140. Very, he wasn't really alone in that category. The only no. person to beat Spellman so far this week has been Jared Cole. He's the only player that can get a win tonight. Funny old game darts, and it when you break it all down. 140, Neil Carr 96. Oh, it sure is. Yeah, real look of disgust 42. on the face of Neil Duff there when that dart just slipped into the five. Back for 54, but wondering what Richie Housen can leave himself on. 23. Neil Lucar, 54. Oh, he's left himself on a biggie. He may not get a go anyway. 50. Game shot on Andy the second won. leg. Neil Duff. One apiece, two holds. Pretty much how we third leg Richie to throw first. expected Game this on. one to go, isn't it? I had a feeling it was going to be tight tonight.
40. Yeah, and that won't do anything to help Richiehausen's cause. But I've got an opportunity here for Neil, but again, has to take it. That's a good second dart. 100. Forty-one. Mm, back to back. Four visits. Forty, followed by forty-one. All his hard work's being undone, and he's exasperated in the in the background. And One the as we expect, ultimately punished. One hundred and forty. Yeah, good response there from Housen, but I just get the feeling not enough for this leg. Neil Duff running away with it. One of the eighty. Three legs, three one eighties. His average at the moment, and all that, one hundred and six point one five. One hundred. Near the car, forty one. Hey, what well, if he holds this kind of form over the next couple of months, and maybe? Just eliminate some of the poor games, and he's going to be—he's going to be a threat in defending that title, isn't he? Yeah, it really is. And I do think when it's when it's elimination as well, when it's a knockout, sixty. You do get car fifteen. Yeah. You, you approach it differently, don't For you? Sure. Yeah, there's more more urgency in your play. That was very nearly a 19. How often do we the see the it? Leg, Honestly, it's something I just consciously keep an eye on. You see, they just squeak the single. Boom, double goes right in the middle. Fourth leg, nearly through the first. And, game and as an opponent stood behind, you're thinking, ooh, you jammy so-and-so. <laughs> Indeed. We've seen it a few times, haven't we? When 58. When going for a double. Two not even in the same postcode, and here's one bam smack yeah. in the middle. Last start, it is the most painful thing to be on the end of. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. 100. 100. It's like a dagger in the heart sometimes. 95. Such a wonderful sport, but it can be such a. Well, it's a wonderful sport to watch. It's just a very cruel game to play. It can be, can't it? Unless you're the one, you know, dishing out the punishment, and then it's a wonderful game to play oh, as well. <laughs> absolutely. 85. But yeah, it's quite stressful at times, isn't it? You can put yourself through all the trials and tribulations and the heartache. Oh, you only got to see what fans, friends and family 100. go through when they, when they watch it. Every emotion... Yeah, I will say, how, having a partner that obviously played at the World Championships as well, I, I as much as I don't necessarily always put my best form on the, the Well, you've put, you put each other through the ringer, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. It is far more stressful to watch than it is to play. 125. Yeah, a slight audible shout of, uh, come on there, from Neil Duff. 131, Neil Carr, 123. Nice. Although the way he's been finishing tonight, this certainly would be no surprise. 66 remaining, just confirming, 16 ball. 98. Wow. Thickness of the wire away from a 3-1 lead. It's almost a perfect dart for Housen, but just couldn't lift it over. 40. Neil Lucar, 25. Uh, when Richie's in absolute top form, you expect him to take those all day, every day, and twice on a Sunday. 40. Game shot on the fourth leg. Neil Duff. Yeah, you can see that uh, fist pump there from Neil Duff. 3-1 up. 
Nailed the flag reaches the third first. He Game converts on. this 3 1 win into a, a victory. We'll go top. <coughs> Considering just a couple of games ago he was in fourth. <laughs> You know, this table. Well, you picked up on it. He said 60. he's in a bit of a precarious position. Back-to-back <coughs> well, -back wins. One against Jared, and looking very good to match that here by the same scoreline. A full one. Forty-three. One hundred. Yeah, Duff going one forty ton and back to back troublous visits for Richie Housen. He's in a world of trouble here. Fifty nine. Well, all is not lost, but he really wanted to avoid a, a heavy defeat here because one hundred and forty. He's. Leg difference is now at minus three, but he does have to play Chris Quantock. And by my reckoning, 26. Near the car, as it stands at the moment, that could well be, quite simply, a straight shootout game as it game stands. shot in the match, Neil Duff. And Neil Duff does convert that lead into a win, a really tidy performance, another average over 98 he had a 98.25 last time out a 98.23 and another ton plus out three 180s four out of nine the doubles all round a stunning performance from neil duff and he does now go top of the table when we come back come back john brown against a man looking for his first win tonight jared colt
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. And there is your all-important ticketing news bulletin for the evening. Before the break, Duff the Destroyer, as Neil Duff got the better of Richie Housen by four legs to one. That's now moved him to the top of the pile as far as Group B is concerned. Next up for us, big game, big consequences, as Jarrah Cole takes on John Brown. And watching this one in the commentary box, Laura Turner and Chris Mace. Thank you, Henry. Well, we are in a very bizarre situation, Laura, where with four games to go, all five players can qualify. However, if JB is defeated here, his race is run. He's currently like on four Jones points, is first. but Game he on. still has two matches to play. So eight points available in total. Four he already say? has. And four from the two remaining games. But it's a big, big ask. He faces... Jared Cole in this one. 59. And then Neil Duff in the penultimate game of the session. So not getting the Abakai out yet, Laura. 98. Yeah. Does Leave it in that handbag of yours <laughs> over there. It does feel sometimes you need them in plural. More than one. Yeah, it has turned one out to be interesting. And Already, Jamra Cole has sat top of the table for most of this evening, but now down in second place and still hunting that 100. elusive win for tonight after going through the card yesterday. Yes, yeah, bizarre reversal of fortunes, isn't 92. it? 92. But that's the nature of this bizarre sport. 140, Jamra Cole, You said yourself, didn't you? You've been in the situation and... Just knowing the, the knowledge that you need one. Well, this would be a bit of a statement. Taking his time. Needs the ball. 127. John Lucar, 67. Game shot on the first leg. John Brown. Yeah, nice clinical finish in there from JB. Yeah, very nice. 67 out, 15 darts. Like challenge to throw first, game on. Six there. Jarrah Cole, of course, was waiting there on 43 after 12. Yeah, he wasn't lucky on the, the 170. Just 100. Pulled it down for the ball and went in the seven, but good signs from both at these early stages. 85. Getting to that point, isn't it, of the night where it's, it's getting desperate, but, you know, there isn't a lot of road left to run. And 49. You're going to make a move. Make it now. 100. Yeah, hit that accelerator pedal and 100. get in the fast lane. That's what you'll be doing tonight. It will be, yes. Not putting it back. 60. Not the A3. To know it like the back of my hand at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time I was here, 99. I found myself heading back towards Devon for about half an hour before I realised, nope, I'm going up the M1. Oops. Yeah, it's quite funny, isn't it? You just get into that autopilot. 60. Jared, car, 157. So, Jared, Jared in a great position here. To level things up at one apiece. Yeah, more frustration now. I've got a feeling that is another blocker. And he wants well, he can go 48. Um, 82. I'm surprised. 
48 with a left 32. Ninety. Got mm. a car seventy five. Slots it in the ball to leave one four two. Single eighteen leaves tops. One all. Game shot on the second leg. Jericho. Third leg John to throw first. Game on. Fifty eight. A bit of an early opening here for Jared. He's switching. 59. 60. 100. Forty-five. Yeah, a bit of frustration creeping in there for John Brown. Not able to find a treble twenty in the first three visits 94. there of the third leg. Jared Cole just forging ahead and looking at breaking JB's throw. One hundred and twenty-five. Sixty. One hundred. Focus from both is really evident, isn't it? Both aware of the importance for different reasons. One's to guarantee 91. their place. John the other is to keep their hopes alive. Eighty-one. It's a good start. It's up thirty-two, but Jared Cole here looking at ninety-seven, so seventy-eight. Forty-two. John Carr thirty-two. To hold. Getting shot on the third leg. John oh, Brown. he does. Fourth leg. Jared to throw first. Game on. Sense the urgency almost now from one hundred and forty. One hundred. And it's just becoming incredibly, despite winning four out of four, just a little bit vulnerable 70. on the on the leg difference. It's Depending on the score line here. 140. To be in a spot of bother. Yeah, indeed. And we, we saw it this afternoon. Tom Sykes came in. He was he was the table topper. In fairness, he was on equal points with John Worthy. Whereas Jared did have a bit of a cushion, but we saw how easily that managed to slip away from Tom Sykes earlier. And Jared Cole running the risk of Jared doing the same thing. He misses earlier. Yeah, it's not going to go this time either. 96. John Akar, 161. 42. Jared Akar, 74. And I'll start there from Brown. Just one of those indecisive ones. Trouble 19 or ball. And sometimes you float it in the middle. Yeah. Oh, wrong, wrong double. 58. Next door. John Lucar, 119. So, trouble 19 will be his first target. Trouble 20 now for Tops. Gets it. Can he find Tops? 99. John Lucar, 16. 12. John mm. Lucar, 20. Cole just chasing that double around the board and offering up another opportunity here for Brown to stretch his lead to 3 1. Yeah, now that, that's awkward. 
No score. Yeah, that's a massive opportunity Gotta do a missed. Gotta four. For John Bryant. Probably felt that he wouldn't even be back at that. Sometimes yeah, you just got to be a, a little bit more assertive and aggressive and in those situations because a right-hander going at double ten, if you're, so if like John if you're no anywhere first, close to on. the outside wire, you're always going to block, aren't you? Which is the advantage, of course, and probably why James Wade loves double ten so much. Because being left-handed, the target is still open if you're on the outside of the wire. Indeed. Yeah, just 58. Wondering how costly could that prove to John Brown as the match moves on? One hundred and forty. Eighty. <coughs> One hundred and forty. Yeah, this is a good bounce back leg here from JB. Yeah, it's a beauty. One three four, one forty, one forty, eighty seven after nine, a possible eleven and ninety nine. John McCall eighty seven. A mile back. Doesn't need to go. Twenty ball. Fifty five. Sensibly leaving thirty two with three in hand. Forty five. John Lucar thirty two. Needs to bring it in. No score. Frustration, understandably, but we'll be back again. But he's what will Cole be on? Yeah, he's just he's got to really attack those doubles. Thirty three. John Lucar thirty two. He's James sort of throwing the them in Come the round. direction in in hope. That was far more aggressively thrown at the double. And he's now one away. Six leg Jada to throw first. Game you can on. kind of see where when John does throw that kind of assertiveness, it you can see from the scoring power in that leg, that's what happens. But it's a strange bit of thing, isn't it? That when sometimes you go for the doubles and when they haven't been going your way, you do tend to almost change the way you're throwing and change the pace. Try and line it up a bit more and it doesn't work always. Yeah, you can tend to be sixty. Just a, a little too safe. One hundred. Ninety three. One hundred. Yeah, good last start there from John, and not forgetting really Jared Cole yet to win a match tonight. Probably feeling quite a bit of pressure up there as well. Forty-four. Jared Cole, one hundred and fourteen. Oh, and misses the single number. Cardinal sin. Eighty two. John Lucar, one hundred and thirty two. Still waiting for your fave. I bet one happens 58. tomorrow night when you're at home. John Lucar, thirty two. Don't worry, I'll give you a name check. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Getting shot on the six and leg. We go Can all the way. So JB's fate is in this final leg of the match. So in the final leg, John to throw first. And game must on. Must win game to keep his slim hopes alive. Ninety-five. One hundred and forty. Did say something quite funny to him yesterday without realizing saying it. I said, Oh, 96. Where, where's your dad? And he said, Oh, I'm, I'm a big boy now. I've come <laughs> on my own. <laughs> I've got kids, mace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and when you've known someone for so long, it, that association's hard to kind of, you know, just to think differently. So true. 
Woman of the Day! Crest one in the match, and what a time to find it for JV. 52. John Nakar, 130. Yeah, this for the match. Doesn't have to go for it. But will now, double eight. 114. Didn't he finish off his? He finished off his last match, didn't he, with the 136? Going to finish this one off with a 130, but he's going to be back. It's been such a dominant leg. 59. John Nakar, 16. Double eight to win it, full three. In Game it goes. Match, John, Brown. John Brown gets the win, and the woes continue for the king of the castle. It's his third consecutive game without a win. 87-62 for John Brown. Four 140s, one 180. And four from 13 on the doubles. When we come back, well, <laughs> the, the matches continue to be big ones, and it's Kwani against Housen. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we could potentially be on course for a little bit of history because John Brown's 4-3 victory before the break against Jared Cole means that a sequence of results could land all five players on eight points at the end of the evening's action. Game eight sees Chris Quantock take on Richie Housen. If that is to be the case, Housen needs to get victory in this one. Right, uh, in the commentary box for this, let's hand down to Laura Turner and Chris Mason. Yes, thank you, Henry. Yeah, and you're correct. This is Richie's final match of this Group B campaign, and he has to get a win. He will then go on to eight points 
And into first leg, Chris to throw first. Qualifying position, and then it is going to come down to legs difference. Eighty-three. Corny really has shown us a bit of a mixed bag tonight, hasn't he? Missed twenty-four for the nine data, but still ended up losing the match and. Yeah, just seen all, all sorts of One things from him. We've seen everything, haven't we? The high and the low. Ninety-six. As it stands, Chris Quantock's on six points plus three, and Richie Harrison's on six points minus four. So eighty-one. This really is the the key matches in terms of qualification because Neil Duff is One through on eight points plus seven because of that superior leg difference. One hundred. Jarrod Cole still holding on to a a second position 100. on leg difference, eight points plus one. You do feel that's kind of by the fingertips. Yeah, it's, this this game is is pivotal in 100. terms of Car, how it plays out, just because of the leg difference scenario. Needs ball. And the, the best that John Brown can get to with a win is eight points. And if he wins four nil minus three. Yeah, as you say, we'll we'll know a bit more about Well, if Richie Housen wins this one, he'll Being shot on the first leg, Richie Housen. Even if he wins it if he wins it four three, he would be Second leg Richie to throw first eight points Game minus on. three. And then it could come down to legs one. It could be a case where John Brown has to beat Neil Duff 4-0. 43. Yeah, that's uh, no easy task for any player. Not the way Neil Duff's playing at the moment, that's for 81. sure. One hundred. It's been pretty steady from Housen from the off. Yeah, it's been an incredible Nine turnaround, five. wouldn't it? From, from absolute a real desperate position, just winning one game yesterday. But the big thing is the fact that he was beaten four nil, four nil in the opening two games. He's showing one hundred resilience tonight. Yeah, but like you say, he's just got that wonderful attitude towards the game. If they go, they go. If they don't, he's not really going to lose too much sleep about it. But still a fierce competitor. And Yeah, he d just with that attitude, just allows himself to play with absolute freedom, doesn't it? We could all learn a lot, I think, from the attitude of Richie Howson. 45. Which is why he's having a bit of a Indian summer type career, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a... Good little legion of fans One as well. Eight. Unbelievable, down at the tavern. Well, definitely playing against a fourth dart down there when you play Richie Harrison. 123, Chris O'Carl, 45. Game shot on the second leg, Chris Quantock. Good leg from Corny. 14 darter, level things up. And break straight back. Third leg, Chris, to throw first. Game on. 96. If Chris Quantock wins the match, then he is through by my 41. reckoning because John Brown could only get to a best of Eight points and minus three. At the moment, if Corny wins the match, he 
he would be on eight points and a plus leg difference, wouldn't he? He's currently on plus three. One hundred and forty. And again, we're seeing a, a fairly steady start from Chris Quantock, but then all of a sudden he he comes alive. Yeah, currently sat on one hundred and five. One hundred and forty. Chris Carr, one hundred and forty-four. Fifty-eight. Visible frustration there for Richie Housen. Great adjustment, though. 121. Because you can't 86. But once that one had gone in, there was absolutely nothing Richie could do to leave a finish. 46. One hundred and nineteen, Chris O'Carroll forty. Getting shot on the third leg, Chris Quantock. Yeah, nice sixteen dot hold a throw for Quanny. Yeah, Fourth leg, Richie to throw first. Game on. Average of ninety-eight point five three. Ninety-one fifty-three for Richie Housen right now. Sixty. Mm, and a trouble twenty. Proving elusive in that turn. 26. Yeah, not much damage done there by Kwani. 81. I just think with that little bit of head shaking that you're seeing creeping into Richie Housen's game, it's... He's feeling it, isn't he? He is feeling it, yeah. 100. One hundred and forty. How he gets two darts in the treble when they're stacking in that kind of position. Fifty-nine. Yeah, it, it, well, it just defies physics. That's perfect for him because he can just drop it on top, but lost the weight of throw. One hundred. Almost got it back with dart three. One hundred and forty. Richard Carr, one hundred and twenty. Just needs to stack on top. Sixty. One hundred and forty. Richard Carr, sixty. Pressures the sixty with a great one forty to leave thirty six. Double ten. Fifty. Is Chris that Ricard, 36. the beginning of the end? <coughs> Getting shot in the fourth leg. Chris Quantock. Yeah, certainly feels that way, doesn't it? Now, so you feel he's, he's got the line right, but just not Before the way Chris to throw first. Game quite on. Quite hard to adjust when he is off, especially on the doubles. One hundred and forty. Well, a win in this leg for Chris Quantock, and that's Group B done and dusted. One hundred. One hundred and forty. You think that would be, you know. Maybe an advantage as well to Kwani as he kind of goes to defend his ADC title tomorrow, knowing that he's qualified for finals night and through a group with 68. this kind of calibre. Great effort. Yeah, going to be buzzing for that. To well, he's well, match. if he d if he doesn't win it, it's also great going to be great little preparation for him. He's going to get plenty of hockey time because those belt matches are a long race. They're first and nine, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. 
96. Yeah, nice potentials, you know, 17 leg warm up. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't play as many matches tomorrow night, of course. Four matches possible. So certainly less than what you would play in a Group C or Group A. Chris Yukar, 90. <coughs> Bull. 65. Mine was okay. Chris Yukar, 137. <coughs> Big ask here for Housen. <coughs> yeah, not going to go. So, Quantock with a huge 45. opportunity to see this place in finals. 25. Nine for double eight. Yeah, yeah, shot on good the adjustment. Quantock. Gets it done. And Chris Quantock wraps it up for one. And we'll confirm the start of the next match. But by my reckoning, is Neil Duff, Chris Quantock and Jarrah Cole who take their spots in finals night. But as you can see, a great performance, 94.18, just the 1180 in the match going to Quantock and very tidy on the doubling, four from seven. When we come back, Neil Duff faces John Brown. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Chris Quantock has beaten Richie Housen 
by four legs to one. And what that has done is confirm the free players through to Saturday night's final. Now, the BDIs among you will realise that Jared Cole and John Brown can both tie on eight points and same legs difference on minus three. However, we then go to the second determining factor in terms of how a player would go through via legs one. And Jared Cole would have the jump by two on that particular metric. So, John in action now against Neil Duff. It's our ninth game of 10 here at the Super Series and in the commentary box. It's Chris Mason and Laura Turner. Thank you very much, Henry. Yeah, the... The worst Jarrett Cole could go to is if he lost... First leg, Neil did throw first. 4-0 to Chris Quantock. Game on. He would be on minus three, wouldn't he? And the best that John Brown could get to with a 4-0 win is minus three. 85. That's why we go to the legs one column. And the most with a 4-0 win John Brown could get to would be 60. 20. And he'd still be behind... Jared Cole. Yeah, so valiant effort there from John in the end, but yes. not quite enough. Too much damage done early on. 100. Yeah, it was it was last night, wasn't it? He just needed that one extra win. 140. Not everything's completely sewn up yet in this table. No. Still need to know the positionings of one, two, and three. And that relates to where which group you go in, of course, to into tomorrow night's... 66. Two groups of three, because that's how we do it on a finals night. If you're joining us for the first time, there's six players qualified One over hundred. the week. The winner of Group A, Alex Spellman. One and two from Group B, and then, uh, sorry, Group C. And then one, two, and three from this Group B, which is, as we know, Neil Duff, Chris Quintock, Jared Cole. And they're split into two groups of three. They all play one game each. Top two from each group make up our semi-finals. Which 60. is a straight knockout. Near the car, 150. Um, the two winners meet in the final. Take away £5,000. And take their ticket in Champions Week with a winner. 90. Or should I say Luke Littler? John the car, Takes away £20,000. I, I say that in jest because the last two Champions Weeks have gone by the 105. way. 105. Near the car, 60. 16 year old superstar. That is Luke Littler. Really is a superstar, isn't he? He is indeed. And Getting shot on the first leg, Neil Dove. Whilst I have no real doubt that Luke will find himself back in Champions Week, he's got more than enough. He's got so Same much John potential. To first obviously. Game on. He finds himself in one of, I would say, the toughest group A's that I have seen here at the Moda Super Series. Yeah, outside of a, a Champions Week, it's certainly the well, and the one I've played in, of course. But um, yeah, it goes without saying, then, Mason. We'll um, but yeah, no, with, with that, without it being a Champions Week, it's yeah, it's right up there. It's super tough, loaded with one hundred. Well, four of the six players have already won weekly titles in a different series, of course. And you've been keeping your beady eye Perfect. on Andy Bolton and his exploits at the yeah, challenge. He's, at, he's the at the Pro Tour, the yeah, Pro Tour. <laughs> yeah, he's he's coming into this in in some in a hot. Rich vein of form. 100. Hitting 100 plus averages with regularity at the moment. 85. 85. You see Duff in the background, kind of 59. prowling with certain kind of a authority in the background. Now he knows he's he's definitely through. Uh, he's got that look of a sixty, a sort of sixties era gangster, doesn't he? He wouldn't have been out of place on that Peaky Blinders, no, would he? He wouldn't, would he? The Northern Iron Ac Irish accent might have been a bit out of place.
Well, not one of those. Yeah, leaves him double 18. One out of the wire, didn't it? Actually, seen the wire shift. Incredible when you're actually playing on one of these boards, you don't see it. car 36. It's so tight in on the double, you actually get to see it just nudge over slightly. Game shot on the second leg, Neil though. Yeah. 2 0. Third leg, Neil to throw first, game on. Certainly good to see. John Brown back playing 46. some darts. He's sort of had a period where he, like most youngsters, they fall out of love with the game. But especially when you've been playing from 58. such a young age, it's it's easy to just want to say, Do you know what? I just need a need a bit of a break and see if I've still got that passion and hunger and drive and determination to put in forty. Put in the hours that's needed. And you got to you got to think as well. Pro tour is so 84. tough, so difficult. It's hard enough getting a tour card, but then when you actually get to the pro tour and you're am amongst the one two eight, <laughs> we've seen it this weekend from the averages, the losing averages, yeah. let alone the winning averages. Yeah, it's staggering, isn't it? And Seventy eight. It's, and it's not necessarily the physicality of it; it's the the way it just just slowly mentally breaks you. It's so 61. unforgiving, and it's brutal. Eighty-three. Another leg where Neil Duff is comfortably one hundred. Neil the car one control. Unlike me on my computer here, <laughs> take it off me, Laura. You really are <laughs> a bit of a technophobe, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. Mate? <laughs> my fingers are too fat. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Sixty-four. Near the car, sixteen. Getting closer, it has to move across. No score. John the car, one hundred and thirty-four. Oh, you could have put them inside the hole of a polo mint. All three of them. Other mints are available. Fifty-four. They just not got holes in the car. It just doesn't work, does it? <laughs> No good with an extra strong minute, it'll just be smashed all over the floor. <laughs> Maybe other hoop based <laughs> products. <laughs> Hula hoops. Hula hoops, yeah. Cheerios. No score. <laughs> Until I got kids trying. <laughs> you know them little Haribo rings? <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be the best one. <laughs> oh yeah, you can you can tell we've just creeped over twelve o'clock. I'm that one that fishes those out because they're my no favourites. Sure. Oh, he's bust. Near the car, he's 16. clattered into the dart and it's found the trouble 20. I reckon you're the one that wears the rings before he's you eat on them. the third leg. Near though. Oh, yeah, I look like Bobby George. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at myself. All right, son. <laughs> Just a sweeter version. Both like John to go first. Game on. Fifty-eight. Well, at least I know what One snacks to bring 14. for you next time <laughs> I'm down here. <laughs> you could be on to a bit of a podcast there, you know, or something. I think. One hundred and forty. <laughs> what sweets do you eat when you're broadcasting? The ultimate in broadcasting snacks. They've got to have a silent wrapper. Yeah, we didn't do very well with our Werther <laughs> originals, did we? <laughs> Not be too chewy, no. just in case. One hundred and thirty-three. Anyone listening, you can tweet in your snack <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> Better still send them in. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Eighty-five. John Carr, one hundred and seventy.
82. I guess you can't call it tweeting now, can you? What no. Do you, what do you call Xing. it? Xing. Xing. Sounds something like you. 100. Johnny Cat 88. Or something like that. In a, you're doing a relationship. <laughs> and I'm just Xing. <laughs> Thirty-two. You know the car many seventy-six. People have said, "Are you X in your X?" <laughs> seventy-six here for the match. Fifty-eight. John Carr, go. fifty-six. The four nil. Thirty-six. Yeah, Neil Carr, eighteen. Top, so Neil comes back. I don't think he's the kind of player to split. He's not. Is he comfortable and confident? Nine. John Carr, nine. 20. Just had a bit of a pull on that final dart. Getting shot on the fourth leg. Yeah, John Brown. Saving dart there for John Brown. May only be a consolation leg. Fifth leg, Neil, to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Sixty. Yes, a win here for Duff. We've, we've put him on 10 points, firmly on top of the table, but we know that the next match between Cole and Jared 40. Cole, one of them will be joining. And if it's Quali that wins, I think he can. Yeah, he can He can go top. 58. He'd have to carve out a, a rather a rather big win. And you have to hope that... 100. John Brown takes a couple more legs out of Neil Duff, which is not looking likely at this stage. 96. Neil the car, 161. Yeah, that would have been finishing in some style, although I'm not sure he would have 99. gone through. You never well. know at this stage. A bit showboating at the end of the yeah, night. Yeah, he knows he's through. I mean, like you say, he's just playing for position at the moment. 44. Still averaging Neil the car, 62. mid 80s despite missing 12 darts at a double. Double turn. Now, just a little shift. 57. And that, that move across the hockey just hasn't really worked for Neil in this match. Yeah, and I'll put it down to it being 10 to 1 in the morning. 85. It can be a factor. Five. Especially considering he has played in every session this week. But he Game gets it done in the, the end. A 4 1 win. 17 data to get it done. And a few more missed doubles than he would like. And we've seen the best and the worst in terms of finishing from Duff tonight. We've seen a 4 out of 4. We've just seen a 4 out of 18. But ultimately, top of the table. On 10 points and um, plus 10 in terms of leg difference. Well, coming up next, our final game of the session, and it's the two other qualifiers out of this Group B Jared Cole facing Chris Quantock.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. So we're joined up here on the balcony by group winner in Neil Duff. Neil, many congratulations. Back at finals night once again. Just sum up your appraise of your performances so far. Uh, don't know, can I, after the first game tonight, I panicked maybe a wee bit. Wasn't feeling it. Um, kind of just kind of felt like it was pushing everything through me up my shoulder. And, um, Hope that it wasn't setting the tone for the rest of the night, but I knew what I had to do. Um, I kind of went back in the players' room after the first one, a bit annoyed. But you just hit the practice board, put right, and yeah, the, I, I showed second, third match. Don't know what the average was in the last one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll always be a contender here. And we saw, uh, and similarly to your lakeside campaign a year or so ago, when you know where the goalposts are, where the targets are, you know how to how to reach them quite well, how to get to that target line. Yeah, I need a target. I need a target. If I'm just if I'm, if I'm free roll, it's kind of it's easy just to kind of you, you lose concentration. You just kind of just go along with the flow. Um, yeah, if I know what I need, what needs to come from me. Then I find it from somewhere, and I suppose that's what makes champions, isn't it? When they find that the way, to, the way, the will to win. Mm -hmm. And you found that will to win, and back into <coughs> tomorrow night. Now you have won a week here in the last series at the Super Series. How much of that, plus that mentality that you talk about, how key could that be? Having a look at the final still that there is to come. Yeah, but I think every win that you get kind of just progresses you and strengthens mm -hmm. you for the next time round. Um, I'll be up for it tomorrow night. Um, I think it would be a bit of payback with Alex Spellman. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll be looking to do the damage again. Good to see Bradley getting through today again today. So it could be a Neil Duff Bradley final again. Well, you two meet in the pool stages tomorrow. You're in the other group to Alex Spellman. So there is a possibility that obviously you could play Bradley twice a night and you and Alex could potentially be on a collision course in that fight. Yeah, I, I don't care who you play. Um, you know me, I'll, I'll, I'll go out there. I'll treat every match the same. Um, just play the game as it's meant to be played, but I'll, I'll be pu trying to push the top of my game. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what the outcome is. Well, Neil, we look forward to watching you again on Saturday night at the Super Seas. Thank you so much for your time up here on the balcony. We're also going to see the two players on the stage behind us as well in the finals tomorrow evening. Jared Cole taking on Chris Quantop. This game is all about finalising the positions, and one of the players will be playing Neil as well tomorrow night at the Super Seas in the first game. Right, let's get into this one in the commentary box. Laura Turner and Chris Mason. Thank you, Henry. Well, he likes a target. Does he have a certain set of skills yeah. <laughs> that he's amassed over a very long career and can be a nightmare for people yes very much maybe start calling him the sniper <laughs> but yeah he does he does play the game very much like that when he when he sort of gets his teeth stuck in first like Jared really to let's go first game on so for the final time this evening, it is just playing for position. Now, neither of these players 60. can finish top because the most they can get to in terms of leg difference is 10, and that's if Connie wins 4 nil. so he'd go 10 points plus 10. But the most he can get to in legs one is 26 because he's currently on 22. 57. The same for Jared Cole, but he's a fair way adrift in terms of legs difference. He's on eight points and plus one, so 60. he can only get to plus five anyway. But I can confirm Neil Duff is the winner of Group B. And 137. Before the off yesterday. He was a 10 to 3 shot to win the group. Before the off tonight, he was a 9 to 2 shot. Jarrod Cole was the 4 to 11 favourite, but Jarrod Cole, despite winning 4 from 60. 4 last night, is still going to qualify, as we've concur confirmed. It may be a case where he wins 83. all 4 last night and doesn't win a game tonight. Tough school. Yeah, very tough. And I mean, tomorrow is a tomorrow's a different day and, and a totally different format. But I just think for Jared and just for his confidence, 
Mm-hmm. And he is a confidence player. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've, we've seen established that, multiple yeah. examples of, of that over the course of five days. And he gets 35. winning, he gets momentum, and he continues to win. Tonight, it starts off with a defeat, and the 59. opposite. Richard Carr, 66. That momentum rears its ugly head. 46. Jarajakar, 88. Yeah, I just think of winning, like you say. Just, just, might just carry it. Might just give him something to carry over into tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. I think it's Richard imperative. Because mm. it has been difficult for him today. Same for a player like, if it had been no someone Scott. like Richie House and his attitude, 60. I don't care. I'm in tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's a different day. Game shot on the first leg, Jericho. Yeah, and a slight throw away of the hand there. It was a winning leg, but a 24. Second leg, Chris to throw first, game on. Just, just been reliably informed. If you'd have backed. 134. Say the small, well, any time before 1 o'clock today, you'd have backed Bradley to win Group C and Neil Duff to win. 58. Group B this evening. It was a fifty to one double. Well, that resonates with the um, Shawnee Mac. Yeah. That eighty to one shot to top the group and just defied all odds and did top the group in the end. Eighty one. Yeah, that was remarkable from Shawnee Mac. Seventy eight. And that's Bradley, uh, uh, Bradley, as Henry was saying, up for uh, up on the balcony. Neil will be joined by Bradley 100. Ruse in Group Two. Does the void at Alex Spellman for for a while, anyway? And Alex being joined by 45. John Worsley, but just waiting to see where these two finish as to who will be joining which group. Yeah, and and bravado aside, you you don't want to be playing him in the group stages really if, you, if you're going to play him you want to play him in the semi or the final yeah, i agree because it's the opening match that's so important your first match up in, in that short group stage that is your car 137. trouble 19 tops tops part one done 77. Yeah, car they shot it on the tops Show good mid oh, top stops. Getting shot and the he gets leg. the Chris top Ponto. stops, just showing Jared how to do it. Acknowledged by Jared. They're like Jared to go first, game on. Just playing for position, but for me it's I think it's really important that Jared just gets a win so it lifts his spirits and he'll probably sleep a little better this evening. Although he probably Sleep like a Boy baby on. after a, <laughs> a week of darts. Yeah, I've only been here since Wednesday and I'm looking forward to my bed. <laughs> 96. Yeah, I look forward to it. I just sort of get in it and then shut my eyes and seem to be getting out of it. <laughs> 60. Too bad, though. I'll be getting back to the pub around 24. 2 a.m. Sunday morning, and six hours later, I'll be cleaning the lines. Lovely. Nice to hear you being put to work 100. there. I don't want to be going off, but I'll be going back to bed after that. <laughs> 57. One hundred. Yeah, could find that second treble. So back on two hundred. You think Jared should be able to leave him leave something handy? Yeah, certainly something gettable. Well, he has there. He's one hundred and thirty-four. Fifty. He has been partial to it. Sixty. Jared, you can't. He's in 50. the bullseye, but he had a look over at the score. No. Getting shot on the third leg, Janet Cole. He's not that kind of guy. No. Despite the uh, 160 checkout yeah. on two balls. 
Well, if I crush your throat first, game that on. That was more needs must. I always remember Taylor doing it to Painter to beat him. What a ten nil, and I think it was ball for a ten, and he just walked up with three and hand slotted in there. Well, you could you can imagine the reaction from KP was not a happy bunny. I most definitely can imagine hey, you have all the players to do it against. Once in the match play, he was playing James Wade and James 83. Wade wanted 80 for the match with three in hand and went tops tops. <laughs> he found it a, a little disrespectful. And this is, this is going back a long time 100. ago when that kind of thing was, yeah, it was a little scorned upon. Yeah, now it's... Now it's the norm. It's the norm. It's, it's playing the probabilities, isn't yeah. it? You know, it's, it's a bigger target. And of course, the players are... So good nowadays, they don't, they don't even contemplate missing. 140, because you can't 140. He had just completely lost his line there, didn't he? I think he was just trying to force it in a little bit. 67. And they made a little bit of a mess there, mainly himself a, a little vulnerable, but there we go. If we look at the other shot over the shoulder, there you can see it. That's how much he can see. Not very much. And he has to try and almost throw a, a loopy dart to try and just 45. Try and get it a, 73. To drop over the top. Yeah, you, you change your throw, don't you? Try and float it in or yep. just try something different. It? There is always an argument to switch. Getting shot on the fourth flag. Chris Quantock. But would have been academic as Chris Quantock takes 73 out and makes this a level match at two apiece. The flag shot to throw first. Game on. Ninety-six. One hundred and forty. None the wiser who's going to win this tie. This was the opening match of the session yesterday, and it went to a six. One hundred and forty. 89 average, you got the win. 140. Oh, but this was very good here from Quantock. Sedging ahead against the throw. And again, he, he wants to stay, wants to try and give himself at least a shot at the 170. Again, lie of the dark, it's awkward. Yep. And again, it's that. Pivotal fifth leg, isn't it? And is this going to be... 140. It is. 140 is thrice. Three on the spin. 81 after nine. 35. Chris Ocar, 81. 56. Didn't have to, but... Knows he'll be back, but back for 25. He may well be regretting that. Oh, single one hundred and twenty-one. A little bit lazy. Game shot on the fifth well, layer. Chris dealt with that very well. Fourteen dart breaker throw leads three-two. Has the darts to get it done here in the sixth. Six leg Chris to throw first. Game on. Fifty-nine. Not able to find a trouble in that opening throw, Chris Quantock. I recall they were paying the favour. Thirty-five. Fifty-eight. After that fourteen leg. Break a throw from Chris in the leg before. 59. Following it up with two scores of 59 and 35. 46. Yeah, it just has, feels a bit edgy. 42. Both players know they will be back tomorrow, but 
This is just to decide who will finish second and who will finish third, and that will then determine the groups that they go into tomorrow. One player will be joining Alex Spellman and John Worsley in group one. Other player, Neil Duff and Bradley Ruse in group two. 84. Ninety-eight. Yeah, Paul Hinks just checking there. Sometimes quite hard to get the angle. One hundred and forty. One hundred and sixty-two. Yeah, great shot there from Jared and Chris Quantock now in seventeen. He's them tops. Game shot in the match, Chris yeah, and Quantock. there you have it. It will be Chris Quantock finishing on 10 points and in second place with that win over Jared Cole, who went through the card yesterday but didn't manage to find a win today. So, found himself in third place. It doesn't matter. He's qualified along with Neil and Chris. And we can go up onto the balcony where we can join Henry with Chris Mason. Yeah, thank you very much, Laura. Well, it's been a group of two halves, it's fair to say, as far as Jared yeah. Cole's concerned. Yeah, for sure. It's it's weird how it plays out, isn't it? He was four out of four last night and, you know, dodged a couple of bullets here and there. And then tonight, just couldn't find a win. And we, we talk about momentum, not just in matches, but in the course of a group. And once you don't get that first win, you start to chase it, then you sort of press the panic button and then... In that game, everything that could have gone wrong for him did go wrong, but credit to Chris Quantock. It's been a, a good campaign so far. It has. We'll talk a bit more about that in just a second, but first, these are the results from tonight's session. Ten games being and gone. This is what we've seen. It feels a little while ago that Richie Housen beat Jared Cole 4-2. Yeah, and it sort of set the tone. And remember, Richie Housen was bottom overnight with just the one win. And uh, for a while, he was in a, in a qualifying position, and there was just one match where he just couldn't find that two points required otherwise he would have been in tomorrow night's finals let's talk about neil duff and in particular his mentality he came up to the balcony at the end of his last game and he, he spoke about how when he knew where there was a finishing line where he knew there was a goal inside he knew exactly what he needed to do to get to that point yeah and i think it was i think it was fairly relevant he said that's what champions do and listen he is the current wdf world champion and he knows how to win he knows how to get over the line and on each occasion when he's been in this campaign and he knows he has to secure a big win, he's produced it. There's not too many players with sort of sub um, 95 and above averages. You know, he's had a couple of sub 80s and, you know, a couple of indifferent games. But when he's, when he's really been asked the question, he's produced. He's, he's, his running average this week is, is going to be right up there. He's, he's played very, very well at times. And uh, I think he's got his... I, I, I just think he's got the tail between his legs and he, he's coming into that period where he will be defending his title in a, you know in a, probably around about eight weeks time and maybe he's just sort of worked out that if I can if I can just peak at the right time and he's coming into that area now what is it like when you go to a period defending something something that's been yours and you know it's <laughs> going to be that you're funny next you? but, but you have you won 15 <laughs> you, of yeah I know but titles. yeah yeah but no, no I wouldn't know what it's like to to defend anything like that but um He's he's just level-headed, isn't he? He's 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 pretty ruthless. Um, he's all business when he's on the hockey. You don't see too much laughing and joking from him. And I don't think I don't I don't think he's got any fear in defending that title. He, he very nearly defended the Australian one just a, a matter of weeks ago. So it shows he has the mentality to do the job. Yeah, some guy called Andy Barnes. Ever heard of him? He's yeah. meant to be all right, isn't he? Yeah, he's he? pretty decent, isn't he? He can, he can <laughs> throw a bit. It's fair to say. Right, let's talk about Jared Cole and in particular. Not went wrong, but what the difference was tonight? I think, listen, in, it, in any sport, you need a, a bit of a rub of the green, a bit of good fortune, and he just didn't get any of that tonight. And where he needed needed a, that second opportunity that he was given on a few occasions last night, he wasn't getting those tonight. And that's sport. That's not just start. That's, that's all sports. We see it in golf, snooker, cricket, tennis, anything you want. You know, you'll see a couple of, you know, neck cords that drop over, and on another day, they... You know, they fall back into your own court and that starts. You just got to brush it off tonight, get a good good night's rest and, and come into tomorrow night as positive as possible. And if he starts his campaign with a win tomorrow night, he's back on the bike. 
Well, it certainly is. Right. Uh, Chris Quantock, thoughts on him overall after eight games? Yeah, gone under the radar a bit, hasn't he? We've not, we're not talked about him, but we've seen some incredible moments from him. Haven't we? We've seen some, seen that wonderful leg a little earlier. And uh, yeah, and he's, I think he's finished second, hasn't he, in the, in the group? Yeah. So in a, in a group full of this much quality, fair play. Well, this is the final classifications as far as Group B is concerned. And I suppose the big name is Richie Housen not qualifying through. Yeah, I mean, very much like the, the night that Jarrod had tonight. Uh, Richie started that way yesterday, didn't he? The, the, the two four nils cost him, cost him desperately in the leg difference. And then he, he was really just, just chasing from them. Very much like John Brown, who, who picked up just the, the one win, ironically, is opening game of the night. He'd, he'd give it a good go tonight, but in these groups, you, you just leave yourself a little bit too much to do. But with four games to go, any one of the five could still qualify. So an exciting end. It most certainly was. Right, so the groups are now confirmed for tomorrow evening. Finals night is almost upon us. These are the groups. Group one, Spellman, Worsley, Quantock. Group two, <laughs> Bradley Rose, <laughs> Neil Duff, Jericho. If you don't laugh at that group, you're going to cry. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you, the way Spellman's played in, in Group A, you just wanted to avoid him. But the one person who won't give one jot about his reputation will be John Worsley, and he will he will come into no, tomorrow night relishing the opportunity to play Alex. I think a lot of people, maybe neutrals, will look at this and think Spellman and Duff potentially could be on a collision course. Yeah, I think Worsley could be a bit of a spoiler. And uh, after what we've seen tonight from Quanta, well, in fact, when you look at the the whole field, they've all sort of you know, defied the odds somewhere along the line, probably with the exclusion of Spellman, who was the favourite to win Group A, did just that. Uh, John Worsley was the favourite to win his group, didn't win it, but got through. Duff was expected to come through tonight, and, and he's done the business. The rest of them have just found a way to, to reach the finals, and why not fancy it? Right, bedtime for us, isn't it? Thank goodness. <laughs> well, it's been great fun to be in your company as ever. Yes, we shall en enjoy a, a, a nice break, mate. You deserve it. I mean, tomorrow night. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, I thought you were. I thought you were going to tell me that it was enjoyable, and uh, I'm off to enjoy a nice break. But we'll do. Shall we? Shall we right, have this just do it one more time. Yeah, I tell you what. On the subject of one more time, <laughs> we'll <laughs> see you tomorrow night. This has gone great. See you tomorrow.